if you get it here now, I am Clay Souza. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and you are at 808 with clay you are either on our instagram feed at clay souza official or watching this on our facebook page clay souza official and also on our youtube channel clay souza official uh, we come here live every monday and wednesday at 808 p.m eastern time to talk about photography more especially lighting composition and posing sometimes we go a little bit off topic here and there because it's important for photography but this is the base of this channel and if you're not subscribed to our instagram channel yet go ahead and subscribe it um follow us on instagram subscribe to our youtube channel because there's Every single day, there's some posts about something interesting about photography. We always teaching and, and teach this for you to help you to move your photography from great to amazing. Because good enough is not good enough anymore. Good enough is not good anymore. We need to be amazing. There's way too many people shooting out there. We need to step up the game. And this is why I'm here to help you. Okay? So... I hope you guys had a great weekend. I did have an awesome weekend. I was in Virginia uh, helping my buddy uh, uh, Brandon Hunter shooting a wedding at MGM Casino. I was myself and Alex. Alex is over here on our channel. So we were there shooting this beautiful wedding um, on a... Um, it's a beautiful location, gorgeous location. I just want to go a little bit into it. I'm not going to go too much into it. Uh, we saw some. We had some challenges during the wedding, right? So, uh, and I think, uh, as I, as the more I think about the the, the 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 whole challenge that we have, I think also is a lot of it is related to our expectations. I mean, we had. This is a beautiful venue, beautiful location, so many beautiful places to shoot, and we did not have time to do everything we wanted to do. We didn't have time to do 20% that we wanted to do, because Brandon and I got there earlier, when we were walking around, I'm going to shoot here, I'm going to do this, we're going to do that, but we had this high expectation. Guess what? We did not have time to do half of what we wanted to do pretty much. Uh, it was a very tight timeline. The plan was really strict on the timeline, didn't give us any wiggly room. And add on the top of that, we had, uh, uh, they had a, a Bruno Mars concert at the, the, the night that we were there. So, um, needless to say, it was like a zoo. There was people all over, like sniffing dogs all over. And I promised you I was going to talk about the mag box, the big mag box. So we made, we took the big bag box. Brandon had his, I had mine. Um, the big, is this a 46? I don't even know. Is this a 46 inch one? Uh, I don't know. If you guys know, just type here in the comment. Uh, uh, and I'll tell you this. It's a great, 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 great modifier. It's a great modifier. But if you're shooting inside the studio, it was windy and man, that thing catches fire that thing catches fire it, it does uh um what did i say it catches fire it catches wind that's what i meant my goodness uh why how did it get fire so it catches a lot of wind uh <laughs> And, and at some point we were shooting, Alex was holding this thing in the air, and I'm watching this, and it's, it's, the wind's just like, well, it's a 42, okay. All right, so it is big, it's huge, and it was really a lot of a hassle to go through with that big soft box in, in the middle of so many people that was there. So we took it outside to do groom, uh, uh, groom and, and, and his groom man's portrait, and it was a challenge because this thing would not, I mean, you have to have somebody holding all the time. It is a great light. It's a great soft box. I've shot this in studio uh, uh, headshots. I love the, the way it throws the light. I love, I love, uh, <laughs> that's right, Alex. Uh, I love the way uh, the grid works. But man, it was challenging. It was challenging. Yeah. Um, we, we, were, we were much better off if we had brought the, the smaller one, which... It's another point of frustration because I had this smaller one. I just did not remember. I had it. I had it with me and I did not remember. We didn't have to go through everything that went through the big one. So if you are 
if you are if you have the big one the 42 inch and you're planning to shoot outside make sure you have sandbags or make sure you have an assistant to hold it for you because it catches wind and will fall and will break your light so be careful with that but the flip side is that it does what it's supposed to do it throws beautiful light and the grid works beautifully so give or take right like everything in life okay so who is ready to talk about lenses? If you're ready to talk about lenses, hit that heart button there. Let me see. Let me see this interaction going up. Instagram likes the interaction. I want to start talking about lenses because there's a lot to talk about here. I have a lot of notes here for you. I have pricing. I have options. Nobody wants to talk about lenses? Oh, that's sad. There you go. There you go. Now, now you're talking. So let's talk about lenses. All right. Let's go. So I split. I split my uh, uh, um, the live today in lenses that are my workhorses, the ones that I use every single day in every single wedding, and the ones that I have and I use sometimes. There are some specialty lenses and there are like overall lenses. And I'm going to show you images. We're going to talk about images and, and the pros and cons of each one of them. Okay. So I want to start with the ones that are, that I don't use much. Um, because they are beautiful lenses, I do have them, but I don't use them that much. One of them, this is the one I want to start with. I want to start with this. This is a 50 millimeter 1.2. Okay, beautiful lenses, create beautiful bokeh. Um, it's a beautiful glass. This lens right now, it retails on Amazon. The Canon version retails for. $1,399, $1,400 pretty much, all right? It's a beautiful lens. It opens a 1.2, great, which is great on low light. If you shoot the receptions, low light, this is a great lens. It creates beautiful images. I just find it a little bit slow to focus. Uh, and if you're shooting at 1.2, it's really, really hard to catch a tech sharp image because if the folks go off a little bit to the side a little bit if knows the eye is going to be out of focus i think uh, at 1.2 the depth of field is a little bit too much for my taste uh, especially if i'm using this in a church where the bride is moving towards me um, i i'm tempted to use it if the light is really low i have used this in weddings um great beautiful image but i missed a lot of focus on this because i thought it was a little bit too slow to focus but anyway if you shoot static static uh, uh uh subjects really good lenses okay um again 50 millimeter 1.2 opens to 1.2 and retails for fourteen hundred dollars you have a choice of the nifty 50 which is this guy here, and this is 1.8, is this is $125. This is really slow to focus. You gotta be careful with this one. If you're shooting weddings and stuff, but if you shoot static uh, static uh, uh, subjects, this is a great lens. $125, you can save a lot of money there. Okay, so that is it for my 50 millimeter. Uh, you guys are gonna see me going back and forth in some counters because I'm, 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 I have two, two timers going on uh, tonight. All right, so uh, I want to limit the time I talked about each each of those lenses. That's why I have. So um, the next one I'm going to talk about is the 85. Beautiful lens. That's 85 uh, 1.4. That's 85 1.4. You can see here 85 1.4. Okay, great lenses. A little bit too heavy for my taste. It could be a little bit uh, uh, lighter, but it's fine. Beautiful lens over here, it needs to be cleaned, apparently. Um, opens up 1.8, great for, for wedding, uh, wedding uh, uh, ceremony in, inside church, low light, very good, very decent as far as focus and speed. So, um, yeah, I do like I do like this, this lens. I don't use this as much as I should because actually Danny, is the one who uses this lens all the time. She is, she she shoots probably the most of the wedding with this lens here. Uh, I don't know how she does that, but she does. 
uh, she puts this on her camera and that's how she keeps on it all the time. Um, comes up with a beautiful image. That's why I don't use this too much in weddings because it's, this one is busy with her, right? That is an, uh, this lens right now retails for $15.99 Amazon, okay? I have no affiliation with Amazon at all. I'm just giving you prices. There is another version of it, it's, it, it which is a 1.8. This is a 1.4. There's a version that is 1.8 that retails for 398. Great lens, it's smaller, lighter, great. I used to, I have it somewhere. I can find it, but I, 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 I used it before I got. I, I had money to buy this one. I used the other one a lot. It was, it is a great lens. So. Uh, Fourteen hundred dollars for this one. I'm sorry, sixteen hundred dollars for this one, and three ninety eight for the other version, the one point eight version. This is a one point four version. And honestly, I will tell you this: from one point eight to one point four, meh. If you know, if you know, um, if when you compare cost and benefit, it's really not not that much of a difference uh, uh, in, in results, and the price difference is is gigantic. So, uh, Bunny uses it, Gilda, because it, it is good in low light, all right? And it creates beautiful images. Uh, it, it does create beautiful images. So, yeah, if we had another another copy of it, I would definitely use it also. But I'm, 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 I'm more of a zoom lens type of guy. Um, I, I don't know. I, I have issues when I, I, I when I'm shooting wedding on a, on, a, on a prime lens that I can I cannot focus in and out. And Danny does that beautifully. I struggle a little bit with that. So um, yeah, it's a beautiful lens, uh, um, stabilizer, auto focus. It, it's there's nothing wrong with that lenses. Okay. So and another one I want to talk about. So another one I want to talk about is this guy here. It's I think it's a lens that overlooked a lot. That's a 135 f.2. Beautiful bokeh. This lens here creates one of the most beautiful bokehs I've ever seen. Really creamy, really beautiful. Um, I, I I love this lens. I really love it. I wish I used it more. Uh, uh, but for some reason I don't. It's it, it's f.2. It's not expensive lenses. It costs like 999 for the type of work that this lens generates, the type of results this, this lens creates. It's not a lot of money. Thousand uh, dollars. It's totally worth it, guys. If you have a thousand dollars, if you look for a good focal lens at 2.0 uh, uh, um, uh, um, aperture. This is the lens for you. It's a really, really solid lens. I love this. I, I. This is a uh, you that that's a 135, 135 f f2, 135 f2. Can you see it there? It's 135 f2. Okay, beautiful, beautiful bokeh creates a, a beautiful image. That's nothing wrong with these lenses. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, I just don't use it because. I don't even I can't even tell you why I don't use it. I just don't use it much. I think like I'm not I don't like changing lens a whole lot when I'm shooting weddings. When I'm shooting portraits and I have more time, I usually change a little bit. But when I'm shooting uh, uh, weddings, I tend to stay uh, 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 fixed. All right. So now those are the three ones that I have that I use a little bit here and there. It's not my 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 main lenses on a wedding day. Let's go to the, my workhorses, what I call my workhorses. I'm going to start talking about this guy over here. Uh, this guy over here is the 100 millimeter macro. Alex, you need this lens, brother. 100 millimeter macro. I, I cannot love this image more, this, this lens more, because it is amazing it is a macro lens opens at 2.8 100 millimeter fixed <coughs> uh, beautiful glass okay you can dial here the distance that you want to focus okay uh, you have the distance here you have the infinite here and you have uh, half a meter and third cent th and, and, and this is all met metric right half meter and third uh, 30 centimeters distance okay 
uh, this lens here is where I do all my ring shots all the ring shots that you see on my website that I show you I, I do it with this lens and let me show you some images that I create with these lenses uh, I select some images here to show you so this is one of them look how sharp that image is create with this guy over here at 2.8 you can really go close and and, and, and use, using this lens here. I, I think it's probably one of the most amazing lenses that I have. Not only, not only macro work, but also great uh, portrait lenses. When you want headshot, shot with this lens here, 100 millimeter. When you're shooting portraits, when you, uh, your, your best focal range is gonna be around 100 millimeter. Okay, and this lens creates beautiful, beautiful, beautiful headshots, beautiful portraits. Okay, this probably was shot at f5, f6, or something, f5, f8, something like that, because that's usually when I'm in studio, uh, that's how I shoot it. But this lens is amazing for portrait because it doesn't deform, it doesn't deform your subject, right? Uh, what did Jeff say? Lens is ring shot, king on the mirrorless. Yeah. Yeah, I use this with the adapter for my mirrorless. <clears throat> Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing image. I'm actually quite impressed with my mirrorless cameras that I have. I bought another one for, for Danny, and I'm quite amazed how well they work. So this guy here, if you shoot details, this guy here is a worth having. Uh, let me show you another image that I created with that lens. Look at this image, guys. I think, Jeff, I think you were with me on that wedding, weren't you? Where we create this image on the top of the piano. That's on the top of the piano, over there. If you can, I don't know if you can see. If there's a ring in between uh, the two shoes, all created with these lenses, right? So now wedding day. This is the only time uh, 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 when I'm shooting details. That's the only time this lens comes off the bag. I go shoot my details and put it back in the bag again. Okay. But again, for portraits, it's amazing. It's amazing for portraits, creates beautiful portraits. You have room for 100 millimeter. It's amazing. Um, headshots, amazing. When I do headshots here, this is what I use all the time. All right. Let's talk about now. Let's talk about which one, which one you're going to go with. This guy here. This guy here is a 2470. 2470 f 2.8. Uh, Alex is asking, how how did I get the ring shot to stick? Oh, the one on, on the shoe? You just press the shoe in and, and we put the shoe in really close and drop the, the and drop <laughs> drop the drop the ring and just adjust the shoe a little bit here and there and it's stuck there that that's how we did it there's no 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 pudding there's not nothing that holding that ring and okay um, by the way I don't know if I mentioned that this lens here it retails for uh, Amazon today $1,299 $1,300 okay so this is another workhorse of mine 2470 when I'm shooting weddings I have a 2470 on one side 7200 on the other side I'm covered from 24 to 200 this is um f 2.8 pretty plain simple lens beautiful glass very very plain i mean it doesn't <clears throat> it does its job it does its job it's not doesn't create like beautiful gorgeous bokeh but it's a very versatile lens from 2470 uh, 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 you have a good range there, and, and that's why I'm using this during uh, 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 ceremony when I'm shooting. Okay, this is good lens. Like, this is your all around lens. I think uh, no matter what you shoot, everybody should have this lens with them because um, it's a very good all around lens. With all of that said, you just have to be careful about something. Be careful when you're shooting, uh, if you're shooting portraits with it. Because, thank you, Gilda, thank you. 
because um, it, this is this is borderline wide angle. It's really not like wide, 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 super wide angle, <clears throat> but this is borderline wide angle. And like every wide angle, it tends to deform on the edges. For instance, when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing bridal party or family photos on a, on a wedding, I tend to step back a little bit and shoot wider. I don't like put my subjects to the to the edges of the picture with this lens because it tends to uh, deform the edges a little bit. Okay, so be careful with that. This lens uh, always gives some room. So and then you can always crop in. You cannot you, you cannot increase the size the the, the 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 size of the image. I mean you can, but it's a little bit of a pain. But you can always crop in. So. Yeah, be careful. But this is a workhorse. This is the lens that stay with me on a wedding. Um, once ceremony kicks in, this is what I have on my side, and I use this lens a lot. Okay, this lens right now retails for eighteen nine nine on Amazon, but there is a Tamron version of it that costs twelve hundred dollars. And I will tell you this. Uh, I use this one here, then use the, the Tamron version because we you do have. The, uh, 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 I started with the Tamron version because before uh, or I, I could afford the, the, the Canon version of it. So I started with the Tamron um, before, uh, and then when I purchased this one, then you now you use the Tamron. I use this one here. There is a okay. Master says I have a Sigma Arts 24/7. It's an awesome lens, but it gives a very have hard time to focus. I heard that about the lenses. I actually uh, consider buying one of them, but I heard it's a little bit hard to focus. So, the, and, and I mean, if you shoot weddings, you, you can't you can't have that issue, right? You you can't. Okay, imagine the bride is coming down the aisle, is walking down the aisle, it's a short aisle, and you you your lens keep hunting, 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 you're going to miss that moment. And you can't, you just cannot, can afford to miss it. So uh, think about that a little bit. Okay, so good lens here, all right? 1899 Canon version and the Tamron version, $1,200. Worth it. We, we have the Tamron version for many years and it still works really well. Uh, now with the mirrorless cameras, there is a version of this lens that is 2870 and opens at 2.0. Uh, the reviews on this lens are amazing. And I have some friends who, have, who own one of them. And they say, this is the lens that I've been shooting the whole wedding with this lens now. Because the, at 2.0, it, it, they say it creates an amazing bokeh. And I've seen some images of it. It, it is pretty impressive. So... I'm looking forward to be able to afford that lens because I think it's right now it's cost around like three grand. That's that's a pretty pricey. So um, that's probably going to be my next purchase, but it's going to be a while now. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to keep using this guy with the adapter. Works great. All around lenses, everybody should have these lenses. Uh, oh, you have the 2870. See, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. One day I'm gonna be like Alex and buy it. <laughs> so let's talk about my two workhorses here that I have, which I love. I don't live without those lenses. One of them you probably know is this guy over here, the 7200. Okay, 7200 f 2.8, right there. Amazing, amazing, amazing lenses. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you a secret. I do not go anywhere to shoot with all these lenses. No matter what, no matter if I have room or not, I always bring these lenses because it is an amazing lens at 2.8. It's my workhorse. It has an awesome reach. I can prove it to you and how tech sharp it is because I shot this image here with the, this lens, 7200. This exact very same lens here. 7200 okay and then i got home and i saw this image how amazing it is i said oh well, let's see how sharp that image really is this guy is leaning and this is a, was in the annapolis moto gp in 2015 i guess 
uh, he is going on that turn at about 150 miles an hour probably okay around that that's when they where they turn uh, and then we did a close-up of that same image a crop of that image and this is how sharp it is guys this is how sharp it is. I look at the exit for that Im the, the, the image. I think I shot that image at 5.6 at 1 500 of a second. It's it's very, very, uh, very, very sharp. Shot with this lens, all right? It's a workhorse. It is. It has an amazing reach. It creates an amazing compression. If you guys don't know what compression is, I will explain it to you. Let me show you some more image shot with this one. This image was shot with this lens here. All right. So you can see, you see how the background is close to them, but it's still out of focus. That is compression. Compression creates this, um, creates this, it brings the background closer, closer to the subject only if you fire back there and zoomed in at 200 all right i've zoomed in at 200 i walk all the i if i had taken this picture closer to them at 70 that picture would be completely different right that this is what i was talking about uh, uh, when i talk about i saw I, I see people shooting using this lens but not taking advantage of what it does best because what it does best is this compression. It brings the background close to you, right? And if you have doing, done my, one of my workshops, or if you have a mentor with me, I'm 100% sure I hit this on the head until you had it. Now, walk all the way back there and zoom in into 100. Zoom in at 200. You're going to see a very different image, all right? Let me show you another image that I shot with these lenses here. So, to prove my point, uh, this one also shot with this image i was way far back there a little bit lower to get those flowers and zoomed in all the way to 200. i could have shot this at 70 very close to them but i wouldn't have that compression this background is way far back there far 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 back there right and that's created with this lens so it brings the background closer to your your, your subject and also creates this beautiful bokeh um and it's a, it's a very sharp lens if you know how i i, I did an engagement session yesterday i i, I used two lenses this one and my wide my my super wide lens, lens which we're going to talk about in a few minutes um so this guy over here stays on camera all the time on my weddings 7 200 on side um 24 70 on the other on the other side and this is what i'm shooting most of it right if i can go if i can walk back and zoom in this is what i'm going to use i'm not using my 24 7 and walk all can close i'm going i'm walking further back and zooming in to create that compression to bring that background closer and to create a better bokeh look at the bokeh on that image right because this background is far 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 back there but when you look at the image looks like the background is really close to you okay so the only drawback of this lens is because it's it's a little bit heavy it's on the heavy side right so you get a yeah uh uh you know, pick up the camera put the camera down cut the camera i mean your arm's gonna get tired but it's totally worth it it, it is a workhorse uh this version here uh right now retails for two thousand and nine nine dollars which is $500 less than what I paid on this one here. Uh, but they also have a Tamron version for Canon of this lens. The 7200 Tamron uh, costs $1,200. And I'll tell you, again, just like the 2470, when I didn't, I, I didn't have enough money to purchase the, the, the Canon version, I purchased the, the Tamron version. And I used the Tamron for many, many, many years. All right? At some point, it started giving me some problem, but I used this, that lens for probably three or four years. Uh, like in every wedding, everywhere I would go, and it creates the same, the same bulk, the same everything. At some point, it started giving me some issues. I got rid of it. Um, it was like uh, I was putting the camera, and sometimes we would just shut the camera down. The camera would just turn off. 
I mean, wouldn't turn off, but it would like freeze every single button. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything on the camera. I had to turn it off, take the lens off, put the lens back on again, and it would start working again. And then, uh, what? One of my timers went off. Oh no. Okay, cool. So uh, I would um, would freeze the camera. I would have to turn the camera off, take the lens off, put back on again and then um, that would work again. So I, I was in a conference where they had a store they would like uh, 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 buy your old lens and exchange it. I didn't sell to anybody. I, 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 that's why I exchanged for this one on the, on the store. So um, I got some, a few bucks for it uh, uh, to go towards this one. That's how I got it. So I, I really, really, really love this lens. I don't go anywhere without it. All right. So Gilda is asking, I like Sigma. What do you think about their lenses? Uh, love and hate, because I got, I, uh, my bad experience with Sigma, I got the 35, uh, the 35 millimeter, and to shoot a wedding, and I mistakenly, I didn't try the lens before. When I got to the wedding, I couldn't focus, the lens couldn't focus at all. I was using the, 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 the 5D Mark IV and could not focus at all. It creates this huge vignette and and would, would just not focus. I had to drop the camera, put the camera on the floor and, and just kept kept shooting with everything that I, the other camera that I have, which was this guy here on camera. So I had to change my plan, but it was my fault because I didn't test it. I, I went on the reviews, everybody was raving about it and stuff. And then I went online to find out that that lens, the 35 millimeter had issues with the, the, the 5D Mark IV. Who knew? I didn't know that. Uh, I should have made a, a I should have, uh, um, um, I should have definitely uh, made done research. So Marcio said, "Don't buy the 24 Sigma R. Why is that, Mar uh, 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 Marcio? It doesn't work good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff saying, yeah, Sigma 35. So, yeah. I, I mean, some people swear over it. I don't because I had a bad experience with it. Maybe I, I got a bad copy." I, I rented it, made it, got a bad, bad copy, but I went online and there was a lot of people talking about the same problem. It doesn't focus. It, uh, on some cameras, it just doesn't focus. So I, my, my suggestion would be before buying, rent one, spend about a week with it, shoot, shoot, shoot in different lighting situations, see how it goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have one that works for you, that's great. That's great. I mean, in the past, we, we, we had to buy like native lens, right? Today, Tamron spe stepped up the game, uh, Sigma stepped up to the game, and they're creating beautiful lenses. So it's definitely, and it's much cheaper. So, so on this one here, we have like a $800 difference in price between this Canon version and the Tamron version. And the Tamron is as good as the Canon. So, yeah, yeah. So, all right. I showed image for this one, right? Now, let's talk about my, I call it my money making, which is the 11-24 F4. Super wide, amazing lenses, creates amazing images. This is a F4, F4, right? Because when I'm shooting wide, I don't need, I don't want, Oh, another timer going off. Uh, when I'm shooting wide, I don't need the background auto focus. I want the background in focus. So I'm usually shooting, I'm killing ambient light. I'm shooting F8, F10, F16, whatever, whatever I need to shoot for. So this lens is great. I love it. It creates all the wide shots that you see on my website that you've seen from me came from those lenses, right? So this is a brand new one, the bright, uh, 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 bright portrait that we did, create with those lenses, okay? And uh, look how wide that is. I was really close to her, could bring her close to the lens, close to the camera, all right? Look at, I mean, I think that picture is, is gorgeous, okay? Um, that's one of the images that we create with this. 
another image that we have created with this is this one over here. So another flying veil for the bride. So this is usually this is the only time this lens comes off the out, out of the bag, right? When you create those bridal portraits, okay? Um, because you're gonna go wide now. Now uh, it took me a little bit of time to learn how to shoot with this because of the nature of this lens everything gets um, exaggerated a lot if you see every image that we shoot with this lens the subject is dead center and that's that's important because if your subjects a little bit to the, a tiny little bit to the side because of the of the uh, uh, the shape of the glass it sees like a fish eye it gets it gets way way bigger than what the, the distortion really is so gotta be careful you have to be dead center to your subject your subject needs to be you have you have to be dead center to the subject your subject needs to be dead center to the scene to the lens okay otherwise there's going to be distortion even up and down if you if you tilt the lens up or down a little bit when you look at the camera you tilt a little bit and you see the, the subject like stretches right if there's guys for, for instance if you if you if you pose in a groom and a bride and the groom is in front of the bride and if his foot is a little bit towards the lens his foot is going to look huge right this is just the nature of this lens it's a not bad mouth i love it i love this lens because this lens allow me to shoot uh my style the big wide dramatic image that i create with those lenses are beautiful uh but they are tricky they are very tricky to shoot with we have to be careful let me see if i have another one i don't think i have another one here no i picked like three of one, three of each um yeah so be careful when you shoot that lens and i'm going to tell you um uh, that is an, a good alternative to this lens this lens right now it retails on amazon for two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars or three thousand dollars pretty much okay it's heavy it's expensive it's good glass but you have a choice of a 1635 for many years i had a 1635 which is great lens this is a f4 also uh and actually the, the 1635 i think it has two models one is f4 and another one is f 2.8 um the f4 uh, uh right now retails for 1099 and the f8 is 2199 okay so this is this is 1124 and the other one is 16 16 1635 yeah 1635 which is also wide creates beautiful image too but it's not as not as big not as dramatic because this lens has something about it uh, i should have put the image here I forgot uh it's not only it's not only wide it it, it because of the shape of the of the of the glass it creates some 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 drama on the on the sky or drama on the ceiling drama on the floor um it's quite amazing it is really quite amazing how this lens works i love it uh it just takes time to get used to it all right it's it, it, it is a great lens it's uh it's definitely uh some people think it's a drawback it's only steps to f4 I don't care I don't mind because I'm usually shooting I'm not shooting uh, out of focus backgrounds I'm usually shooting uh, I'm killing the ambient light and I'm shooting dramatic um, at f10 f16 whatever I need to so I'm not I, f4 for me is is plenty but again to 999 three thousand dollars the option is a 1635 which is not uh, and believe me, there's five millimeter makes a lot a lot of difference how far from the subject very close very close to the subject actually um shooting laying down <laughs> yeah uh very you can go very close to the subject but again 
careful because the, 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 the edges distort. You have to be very careful there. Your subject needs to be very centered to the to the frame and you need to be very centered. The camera needs to be very centered. If you if if you get the camera in here, if you look at this, if you do this a little bit, distortion is, is huge. This little bit that you do with the camera or this or this, just that little bit there makes a huge distortion and your image is going to be damaged. Uh, you can always reduce the distortion on, on, on with software, but you can only go so so far. So um, this is guys, this is what's in my bag. Let me show you another image that I create with the 7200. Forgot to, I, I just love this image so much. I forgot to show you. Yeah, this bridal portrait here. This was created with the 7200. You see that background there, how f the background is far, far, far from her. How you bring it close because I'm shooting far away from back there. 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. Um, you know that the distortion doesn't come from how far you are from the subject. The distortion comes from the direction of shooting, your point of view, right? So if, if the subject is centered and, I, and I'm centered and everything, it doesn't matter how far or how close I am to the subject. It's not going to distort. Distortion comes if your subject is not centered, if your subject is a little bit to the side, then it's going to distort. Or if your subject is centered and when you shoot, you tilt the camera a little bit to the side or a little bit up or a little bit down. Then you're going to introduce the distortion. And you can totally see this when you have your camera on a, on a when you look at through the viewfinder with the camera. Do a little bit of movement and you're going to see the distortion happens and it's a lot. It's a lot of distortions. So it's not the distance from the subject, but pretty much like your positioning in relationship to the subject and the subject positioning on the frame. Okay? So guys, this is what I have in my bag. This is what I carry with me like everywhere I go. Uh, now that we're switching our system to the mirrorless, uh, some of those lens are gonna be repurposed and we, I want to start to get in the mirrorless lenses because they are very good. But I think, what's the, what's the takeaway from this, from, from this live today? Um, learn how to use your lens to, to its best perform, to make it perform best, especially this guy over here, the 7200, right? Walk back and zoom in to create that compression. This makes a huge difference in photography. Compression makes a big difference in photography. All right, have the equipment that you need because this is the, this defines your style. This guy over here defines my style. I paid three grand on these lenses, but this lens has has paid itself over and over and over again because my couples come to me because of my dramatic wide shots. If I didn't have this guy, I wouldn't be able to 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 serve the market, right? Uh, but again, like everything. You need to learn, you need to go out, you need to practice, you need to try, you need to make mistakes. I made millions of mistakes with this lens. It took me, I will tell you, it took me month and month. I, 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 I'm quite confident to say it took me about half a year to learn how to shoot with these lenses. Today, I know what to look for, I know what to expect, I know how to pose the right... The, 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 my, 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 my subjects on the right spot to be able to shoot with this lens. But was trial and error because I came from the 1635. Guess what? I had the 1635. That's why I'm recommending that lens. And the 1635, because it's not as wide, it's way more forgiving. The 1635 has a, a flat glass like this one's here. So it's not a, a, a curved glass like this one here. So it's a much more forgiving lens. As I came from the 1635, I thought it was going to be the same thing. Put the subject there and shoot and look at it back. Oh, man, what happened? Look at his feet, right? That type of stuff. So it took me a long time to learn, but you kept pushing it, kept pushing it, keep pushing it. You're going to get there, okay? Yeah, 1424 millimeter. That is a really good lens. So I would definitely start using it because this is what you this is what creates the wall art that you're going to sell. All right. Do if you guys have any questions, 
let me know on the DM. I think that's all for me. I think I went already over time what I wanted to do, uh, but that's fine. It was a good conversation. Again, I thank you so very much for watching. I thank you so very much for the support every week here with me. And I hope this was useful to you. If you have questions, hit me on DM and I will answer all the questions that you have about Lens. What you saw is what's in my bag. There's nothing extra. This is what it is. This is what I carry with me all over where I go. All right. Thank you so very much, guy. Hit the heart button. Give me some interaction there. And if you're watching this right now, the, the recorded live, you are at Clay Souza Official, either on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, where we talk about photography every Monday and Wednesday at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time. We talk about photography. So you guys here, Tell your friends about those lives. Tell your friends about our Instagram uh, 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 group. So come over and let's let's get people signed up. Let's create a, a solid and strong community here. All right. Thank you guys so much. And this li this this live is going to be uh, available in a few minutes on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for you guys to watch it later. Okay, and share with your friends, share with your friends, share with your friends, help us out, share and like and interact with us, okay? Thank you guys so very much, have a great night, and I will see you on Wednesday, bye.